All right, so we'll start up another recording here. Let's get this other deck going. Yeah, I can pro if depending on how five how long five color Niv takes, I can probably squeeze in a Tron. Um, thoughts on Once Upon a Time? Overall thoughts on it? I think it's a pretty sweet card. I already bought a playset. Um, as far as the de the card overall like in specific decks i feel like it's gonna be a really good card in um in specific combo decks like creature combo decks i think it's absolutely nuts also as a thaw youtube videos oh i always want to wrap up can you try to explain oh yeah sure i can always try to add a wrap up i didn't really think i'm that interesting to listen to so <laughs> i don't know if that's good or bad but uh yeah, as far as the last deck we just played, the the, um, the Urza deck, I am a huge fan of this deck. Um, I've been trying to find an optimized list for it for me and how my play style is. Um, so far, I have seen that Goblin Engineer um, is absolutely nuts and so much better than Stoneforge Mystic. I was trying the Stoneforge for Batterskull, um, and it just really wasn't where I wanted the deck to be. It didn't feel like... A lot of times I was, like, fetching up a batter skull when I should be, like, fetching up the combo. Um, and then I am very, very interested in that new Emery card. I wasn't 100% sold on it. I was like, I'm going to see how it plays out before I buy it. Eli was like, this card's nuts. You need, you, we need to be on this deck right now. So I don't know if it's going to be better than Engineer specifically, just because... Engineer lets us tutor up anything, where Emery only lets us mill the top four. But being able to cast anything from your graveyard just by tapping it's really crazy. And then the potential of being able to drop it on turn one is absolutely nuts. Um, other than that, like I feel like the Urza deck needs to be in the blue-red shell uh, more than in the blue-black, uh, uh, the Grixis. I've been really liking Teferi for a lot of answers to things, so I don't know. We'll see how that all plays out. And I appreciate the uh, the backup there, uh, 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 Big Monkey. I uh, I don't know. I, I always think that I have a lot of growth to do and a lot of uh, development in this game. So I I never think I'm very good. And I always want to be. Uh, I want to get to the point where I'm taking down a tournament. Like if you're not taking down a tournament, I have a hard time like saying that I'm good. Right? Like you don't have that notoriety there if you, unless you're at that point. But I appreciate it, Big Monkey, quite a bit. Well, there is a card I want to test out in, in the five color uh, Urza deck, and that's uh, Ashiok. Um, I've seen a couple lists play it in the side, and I want to test that out. It, it's such a back breaking card against um, Shift. All right. All right, so back onto this five color Niv deck. It was submitted to us by Big Monkey three six nine. Um, this deck I've gone against a few times. It's really impressing me the fact that it can play all these basics, being in such a crazy like uh, deck with all these different colors. Um, but the Astrolabes help it quite a bit. Um, it plays a ton of one ofs and some high value other cards that will play multiples of. But the idea behind this deck is to get a Niv Mizzet. And once you cast Niv Mizzet, you get to reveal the top 10 cards of your deck. For each color pair, you get to pick one of those and put it in your hand. So basically, you can like drop Niv Mizzet and draw 10. It doesn't usually happen as a draw 10, but it could potentially happen. Uh, Bring the Light lets you get all these different variants of value cards um, as you like or cast Niv Mizzet, from my understanding. So, pretty sweet. Kess seems really cool. Let's take a look at all the different one drops we got here. So, we got uh, Search for Force or Planes. We got Is It Charm, Dreadbore, Triple Assassin's Trophy, Triple Reddit Six, Four Lightning Helix, Two Glittering Rifts. That's sweet. Um, a Coital, Teferi, Kaya's Guile, two of those. We've got an Unmoored Ego, Culligan's Command, Supreme Verdict, Huntmaster. I love Huntmaster. Kess, what does Kess do? You can cast a card from your graveyard on every one of your turns. Okay. Okay. Tulsmere is sweet. Bring the light in the nibs. Okay. This seems cool. All right. In the cyborg, we've got a crumble, a weather, a veto, a cabal, 
or Campbell, Kaya, Double Ashiok, another Unmoored, Hostage Taker, Izzet, Stratocaster, Assassin's Trophy, Deafening Clarion, Knight of Autumn, another Niv Mizzet. I imagine we fetched that up using Glittering Witch, and then a Fracturing Gus. Bring to life or cast thing, you get to cast it with no. Oh my gosh, that's so sweet! <laughs> oh man. Alright, I'm gonna upload this deck real quick, and then it's in Stream Decker. And we are good to go. Let's jump into a league with this. Oop, that's the wrong deck. Do I want ice cream? I am lactose intolerant, I'm pretty sure, so I can't have ice cream. Although, at times, it is worth it. But no, I am good. Thanks for the offer, though, sweetie. I am a sucker for mint chocolate chip. It's non dairy Oh, my gosh. You're on top of it. Okay, so we cast Tefri with this hand, and that's pretty much it. Extra draw. If we draw another black source, we can cast Trophy in command. Let's try it. Your list I'm looking at, it seems good. It might be a bit much to be on both two Weather Storms and two Thrag Tusk. In a, um, but if you're in a, a heavier burn meta, then I think that's the right call. The bullets you have are Liquid Metal, Sorcerer Spyglass, Crucible, Bridge, Trinisphere, and Michael Synthlatus. So I've been really like, just not impressed with Crucible. I just haven't been bringing back my lands very much. And, like, the Ghost Quarter Lock just doesn't seem to happen either. So, like, I don't know. I just haven't really been impressed with that card at all. Opponent kept a four without any lands. Hmm, do we've got all of our colors? How great. I just want to cast. Okay. Yeah, I should have held up the trophy. It would not have cost us anything to do that. Okay, they're just conceding. If we think they are on that, we should bring in the Veto and the Ashiok, right?
Should we also bring in the unmoored ego? Okay, we'll leave in the ego to wish it up. Ashok seems cool though. I don't wanna overboard too much in case they're not on that, but. We are drawing this conclusion from the fact they kept a four lander. They aggressively mulled down, um, and it felt like they were mulling for a combo piece. If they ever tron, they would have ran a sexist too slow. Okay. I will take it out for next time. And then already submit. This seems sweet. Got a lot of interaction. We can bring back that verdant for a lot of cards. They definitely seem to be on the combo. You are psychic, Big Monkey. Psychic. All right, see if we're dead here. for Neil form. Do we just hold up the lightning helix? I think so. We'll pass it over. Yeah, Pillar did jump up to like 30 bucks. This, I like blew me away and they were looking at that price. Okay, we'll run out the Niv. I have actually never played Fire Emblem. And I feel like that's one of those games that I'm supposed to play. I think we just got another follow. Throne Dwarf just hit us with that follow. Much appreciated. We're dead here. Alrighty, let's bring in the other trophy. And we'll take out our Renin Six.
Yeah, I've always I've always meant to play that card. I mean that game. I just haven't gotten around to it with all the various versions. All right, glittering wish here. That's great. And we should be able to cast Unmoored on three. So as long as we can get there. Okay, the fact that they just kept is really scary. I think we're gonna go fetch up a white source. I feel like I should just hold up the trophy. And then next turn we have Kaya's Guile, so on turn four we can Glittering Wish possibly. Packed in hand. Don't have the pack in hand. Yeah, no, it was a sacrifice cost, so we couldn't respond to that. Oh, any relevance. They are all or nothing right now, though, because they, uh, they've packed twice already, right? I'm sure they have a pact. Oh. Okay, I see what you're saying. Responding to that trigger, we're able to blow up the Allosaurus. Oh, wow. This is why you're the pro, Big Monkey. This is why you're the pro.
Both. I think Burn's still a great deck right now because the format hasn't settled. have a pretty hard time casting this is it charm so I'm gonna pitch that one because once like the format really settles down right like people can hate out storm um, hate out uh, burn pretty easily but until then like it's fine you know we are going to take out that dude We could really use a fetch land. Yeah, I think if you're a burn player, it's a really good time to be on burn right now. Uh, I think that Tron list you sent is pretty solid. The only things that I noticed in it that I'm not 100% on is... Um, in this, I think your main deck is really good. I always have a love-hate relationship with Dismember in the main, so that's whatever. Um, that's my only personal preferences on it. The, uh, your Thrag Tusk and Weather. If your format's really heavy on Burn, I can totally understand that, but if it's not, um, I don't know, you might not want to be on that much. I'm going to trophy this anyway. I, I'm a big fan of Veil of Summer, at least in uh, every deck that I've played with it. It's been just phenomenal. I'm not 100% if it's actually good because in Tron because like it's hard to have that green mana up, but I think it's still worth it. The card has just been so great every time I've cast it. I've blown out so many players on it. Yeah, if you if you if you did have a spot you wanted to trim, Tusk would be the um, having two of them going down to one seems reasonable to me. Everything else seems pretty solid. Uh, oh yeah, and, and like I said, Crucible. I, I'm not 100% on Crucible. Um, Crucible's just been hit or miss for me quite a bit, so. I just haven't, like, how, have you been fetching up your Crucible a lot? I have not actually fetched up Crucible in any games that I've played. We could really use a land here. Yeah. No. What if they field our lands, then what? Yeah, so like, I, I know the idea behind it, so we don't get our lands blown up, right? But in the games that you've been playing, have you actually gotten into that scenario and have you fetched it up? So it's one of those cards that I think is good. I've been playing it, obviously. I've, I've had it in every single iteration I've had. But have you actually gotten into the position where you're like, oh my gosh, I need to be back in this game. The only way I need to be back in this game right now is with the Crucible. Once or twice in how many games? How many matches have you gotten there like, yeah, this was it. This is exactly what I needed. For me, the, the I haven't fetched it up in any big tournament, and I haven't fetched it up in, I don't know. So, yeah, so that's that's where I'm at with it. I, it, it might come back. If blue-whites on the Resurgence or the black-green decks are enough, like to where I would want it, then I think it'll be good again. But for now, for me at least, I just haven't been like too impressed with it. So I've actually been cut it from my uh, 15 card sideboard. One, two, three, four, five. They've got... Hmm. 
think we're just fetching up a red source. <sighs> do we go red source here for Huntmaster or do we go blue source here for Supreme Verdict? I'm thinking Huntmaster, blue for the Niv. Well, red, the red source or the blue source gets us closer to Nev either way, right? Because they're both missing colors for us. I'm thinking red as well. If we get red, we get run out Huntmaster there. They're probably dropping a prime time on their turn. But we can flip the Huntmaster on our turn if we don't hit anything and take another tip, uh, ping away that Carnabet. So like in that scenario, isn't isn't the red source the same? But we just get a threat on board. Uh, I guess I guess we'll just grab the blue. You are the person that's playing the deck, so I'll trust you. We're gonna play the blue. We're gonna pass it over. If they run out of prime time, we can uh, supreme verdict it. Well, that's the other thing. If we ran out Huntmaster, he can't lattice us because we went with the blue source. He can lattice us. Because the astrolabe's locked down. Oh, you were thinking it wasn't uh, locked down and we could do it. Yeah, no, it was locked down. So I think they're going to lattice lock us here as a result. <laughs> no worries. That was the line that I had wanted to go with Throne. I went with uh, what Big Monkey suggested, but Big Monkey thought that our um, thought that our Astrolabe wasn't locked down, so. Do we bring in Crumble and both Ashiok's here, or do we leave one Ashiok in the side to glitter it up? Not even sure if Crumble's good here, right? I feel like Kaya's good, actually, being able to take out their uh, artifacts. And I think Dovin's Veto as well. Probably trim a Ren. Oh, that. And a Tefri. Yeah. 
I don't think, uh, yeah, I think keeping one Ash Jack on the side is correct for Glittering Rush. And, I, yeah, I didn't think. Crumble was, uh, if we, I mean, they run two uh, double sets of duels, but it's probably not good enough. I think I'm good with this. Mm-mm-mm. Too bad we didn't have another land. Sure. That's a good point, Throne. Ren does kill Sakura Tribe Scout, and what makes um what makes Tefri amazing, Adam? Uh, just because I'm I'm new to this deck, obviously I'm playing it for the first time. It looks good. I like the Emrakul. I'm a big fan of that card right now, too. I think we're going to ship the Kess. No, let's ship the Huntmaster. Yeah, bouncing their artifact is relevant, uh, if, you know, especially if, with them being on the car and, and finding out silver bullets. I don't think the, um, not 100%, but I'm not sure if the, that, how much relevance that is at instance, because they usually just do it on their turn anyway. But we got a Teferi anyhow, because we're good like that. We could hold up Veto here, but I think getting an extra land here is super important. That is fair. You can bounce your own Astrolabe. Mm, I should have held up Veto, actually. If they run out of Tribe Scout turn one, they usually have the amulet, right? Tell you what, we could really use a land. No land, how sad. There's Mazusa.
I think we just have to draw here. Because they have prime time that Vito's not stopping them anyhow. And if we don't hit lands, we're just going to lose. Yeah, I think Tolzmir is a pretty sweet card for the fair matchups. Um, debatably, we should have cut it here because we're not really in that setup to where we want to be in the grindy fair matchup. Uh, Kess makes sense being able to do it on... Um, being able to chain Bring the Light into Kess into... Um, into another bring, uh, bring the Light, though. So I'm not against that at all. feel like we're dead here. Not quite, but they're going to be so far ahead. We get to block here, but they're just making an insane amount of tokens. They're gonna bounce back to Larry OS. Ugh, this is rough. We still just gotta hit lands here. We'll be able to keep them off their next uh, Titan with a veto, but if we don't get some board presence going here, it's gonna be over. We can run in six for the windswept, but that's not ideal because we got to keep up this Dovin's Veto. We need to hit a land naturally here, I think. And then we can veto their pact. And then we can run in six and hold up Veto still. They're copying Field the Dead. It's not good for us. It's not good for us at all. Good thing I didn't trigger it, but. All right, so the last card in their hands, Telerio West. All right, that's sweet. All right, so we can't, we're gonna pass here because they're gonna have to summoner, they're gonna go Telerio West for summoner's pack, so we'll just pass it. We're gonna go to four, five, six, six life, ugh. This is looking rough.
hope they don't have another land. Yeah, I think we have to do the make them sack and make a 1-1 to block whatever token they pump to get an extra turn. We really needed to land there, though, because we needed to go runner-runner into lands. Yeah, I think, I think we'll have to do the gain 4 make a spirit because it's probably the highest upside. Yeah, we have to do that, right? Because if we make them sack a creature, I guess we can go to one. Yeah, if they were smart, they'd pump after blocks, but who knows? We'll gain four and uh, make a spirit. Go to two. I don't know if we can draw anything to stay in this game. No, that's it. We were just so starved on lands. Yeah, if we would have hit land, land, we were actually fine. We would have been able to stabilize, um, but we did not. Well, we've got all the mana in the world. And we've got one piece of interaction. Is that good enough? The fact that we can pretty much cast anything in our deck, is that good enough? <laughs> How that last game went, I almost want to keep this hand just so we can hit our land drops. <laughs> you say Moloch, okay, I will mull this. Ah, this is better. I'll keep this. Do we ship away our one piece of interaction? Or do we ship away the safe right? The quest? Okay. Let's ship the quest.
Oh, and we get a glittering wish. Oh man, this is gonna be great. Okay, so we should be going against um, Urza. So, we've got some good targets we can fetch up if we need it. Do we just go fetch it up now? I think we just go fetch up the Unmoored Eagle, right? And then we can Eagle them on our next turn. And then that way we can't lose to the combo anymore. What do you guys think? All right, I'm going to go with that line. We might name the Foundry. Either way, we get rid of the combo, but if we get rid of the Foundry, we also effectively get rid of the sword. Where if we get rid of Urza, we don't. Okay, they've got Foundry on board, so can't name that anymore. So we'll name Urza. Got Breeding Pool Engineer Sword and Thopter in hand. Alright, so their cards left in hand is a Thopter and a Engineer. Breeding pool's not bad. We're gonna be able to Niv next turn, which is cool. I believe, right? Definitely. They run out engineer, we'll we'll helix that, and then we'll go for Niv. Do some good stuff. Wellspring, okay. Well, this is my first time casting Niv. How exciting!
a red green card, we'll grab a hot master. What? That's all we hit. <laughs> Oh, that's disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I didn't realize you couldn't hit Kess off of the uh, Niv Miz. It had to be exactly those pairs. <laughs> yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> Oh, at least we'll have a trophy to take out the foundry. And then we'll drop a hunt master and start ticking away at stuff. Oh my gosh. I can't play this deck. My luck is terrible. My luck is amazing. <laughs> Apparently it's just not with this deck. Yeah, he has another in hand. But I'll slow him down a bit. No, he has another one in hand. Alright, there's the other factor. Yeah, if we get another wish, uh, Fracturing Gus is a must-grab. I'm curious if we trophy their Inventor's Fair right now. We're probably okay to... S well, we can't swim, they'll just jump block it, so we'll just pass. Just looking to buy extra turns. I'm gonna burn this helix. And I don't want to cast it on our turn. I want to flip that hunt master to take out another one. Tolzmir is not bad.
This Hunt Master Tolsmere thing is pretty cool. If we flip it twice, we'll get to get two life, five life, and then... Yeah, it's not bad. Okay. I don't think so. we can just kill off our stuff. I think we'll swing with that one. That's it. Yeah, I think breaking up the combo is really important. Um, Urza effectively just becomes a draw effect for them at the end of the day. Because um, we can deal with one token. That's why I wanted to hit the Thopter. Uh, hitting the sword seemed lower value. I didn't. I thought we'd be able to keep up with them, and we probably would have been able to if we didn't have such a terrible, um, such a terrible Niv flip. Like only hitting two cards Ugh. or three cards. I don't know. Either way, it was awful. All right, so we're gonna flip here. Yep, he would be able to. Or they would be able to. Ten. Block that. Helix that. We get to stay alive for one turn. We'll cast the trophy as well so we can eat another card. I think I'm going to trophy the Inventor's Fair. Because then if we hit a Glittering Wish, we can Fracturing Gust and stay in the game. Are they whirring right now? Are they whirring for Spine? Are we serious? <laughs> sure. All right, uh, with that being the case, we have to trophy their dude now. Otherwise, we're dead. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're so unlucky. <laughs> oh. So Kaya seems good. <laughs> And so does uh, Static Caster. Should we leave these in the side? Those to fetch them up. Helixes don't seem particularly great to me. They're going to hit the Engineer, but they, the Engineers usually do their work just hitting the board. I feel like Ashiok's not bad here, hitting the graveyard and stopping them from fetching up whatever they want. Um, mm -mm -mm. Night of Autumn seems reasonable as well. I think we want to bring in the Kaya because we're going to be... 
we're going to be in a situation where we just want to, when we do Glittering Wish, we're probably going for that Unmoored Ego right away. I guess Guile's not that great. It does stop the combo, though. Probably don't need the Hunt Master, right? All right, let's try this iteration. Seems good. We just need to rip a land and we can Ashiok them. Fetch up a blue source. Come on, don't do me like this. Don't do me dirty like this. I think we're just going to go ahead and Ashiok them. Oh uh, yeah, we hit a Spine and one Urza. Crack the fetch. Crack it! <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fine. I don't really care. We're about to cast Bring to Light, so... Well, at least that was a little bit better. We got four cards there. Mm -mm -mm. Let's discard the Renin Six. Possibly we should have kept that, but I didn't really want to discard anything else. Because we kept that would be at least increasing our land count.
sign the swords are a little fun little interaction. Do we just bring the light again? Or do we just hold up Culligan's command and Kaya Guile? I think that seems correct. They'll go for the sack thing and then we can uh, get rid of both swords. What's Culligan's here? Well, definitely gonna make them destroy that pithing needle, but I think we also want to make them discard a card. Guile here. I don't think so. We could swing Wrath the board. I think that's where we want to be. Bring delight for fracturing gust. We didn't bring it in because of the. Uh, we didn't bring it in because of wanting to fetch it up with glittering wish. So we'd have to bring the light for a Glittering Wish and then Fracturing Gust next turn. And I think we're dead if we do that one. They're going to bring us down to 12. And then they can hit us for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I guess we wouldn't be dead. But I feel like the safer play is just doing the Supreme. That's very fair. We can do that for the next game. I 
it wasn't sure how good it is uh, leaving it in the side compared to bringing it in because uh, we can glittering wish for it but i guess having multiple copies of uh, brings light is super relevant here's the foundry That's going to represent a whole lot of damage. I guess we just Niv? Do we just Niv and Pray? Or do we bring to light for... Bring to light for the... Um, Uh, if we run out Teferi, we can't actually cast Bring Delight on our next turn. And then I think we just... Is that worth it? I don't know. I guess we can do that and hope that they get greedy. And then we can catch them with a Kaya's Guile. Bring the light first, wish, wish for dust. The problem is we're one mana short, right? If we bring to light, we can't actually wish this turn. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe we just do the Teferi line. And uh, we could force them to bounce the Thopter Foundry. They do it in response. And then we can Kai's Guile them. It only gets rid of one sword, though. Maybe we should just run out Niv and see what we hit. If we run out Niv... I, well, either way, we got. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with the div line. All right, so let's grab Glittering Wish. We'll need to hit a land, but if we can hit a land, we can Glittering Wish into a Fracturing Gust for the win. Although we might be just dead. I think we're dead. Yeah, every sacrifice represents two dam uh, represents the damage, so we're just dead here.
Mm-mm-mm. We're not doing great. We'll finish up this league. We'll do some Tron, though. We have plenty of time. I want to keep playing around with this deck a little bit more. Uh, do you want to play your version there, Big Monkey? I think we'll try your second version. Phone is blowing up. <laughs> no. It's fine. We actually had a pretty close match against um, the decks that we're going against. So, And I feel like some of the uh, uh, the reasons we lost were just like the sideboarding options. Like there, if we brought in the Fraction Ghost, we obviously stay in the game, right? And then we just take control of it from there. Um because we would have been able to instant speed Fraction Ghost on our turn, Kai's Guile, exile their graveyard and just win. So by not bringing that in, that was definitely an error on my part. Um, and then, like, outside of that, if we would have just gone with that Huntmaster line, same thing. We wouldn't have lost that game one. We'd be going to a game three against Amulet. So uh, these matches are a lot closer. I mean, they don't represent it with 0-2, 0-2, and 1-2, but very, very close. I think I just have that your list ready to go too. So I don't think it'd be a problem for us to play that. All right, we're ramping, we're drawing extra cards and if they're a combo deck, we can unmoor to Eagle them. So I'm cool with this. Hunt Master is the true stabilized master. Well, we've got Niv Mana guaranteed now. Probably going against Grixis Shadow, which probably isn't a good thing for us. <laughs> Goodbye, Unborn Ego. Okay, it's not Grixis Shadow, it's probably Mardu Shadow. Definitely feeling Marduy. One shadow. Two shadow. Well, at least we can Kaya's Guile one of them. Inquisition.
Alrighty. Definitely wouldn't mind a Huntmaster here to stabilize, as Isaac says. We don't have anything to fetch back. Can we hope that they're greedy? Nope. Alright, so Kaya's Guile seems great here. Just takers, possibly just a good answer too, so we can grab their threats. I think, other than that, I'm okay with this. Some relevant cards. Let's see if we get to keep them. We're really good at drawing lands now, I tell you what. I think that's a sign that we're supposed to be on trying right now. Just take her. Our opponent's a pro and making them lose a bunch of life. Down to nine already. Oh my gosh, they're good at this. One shadow. That's not bad. Little trophy, your only threat.
Dead Shadow. I never saw that coming. I think we just want to grab a temple garden. Teferi doesn't seem bad. And then next turn we can hostage tanker and take their death shadow. Okay. Take their ranger? Okay. If like my my only issue with taking their ranger is that our our hostage taker's probably gonna die and then they'll get their ranger back and get another shadow. If we go the route of just taking their shadow, we can cast a shadow before they have a chance to respond to us, right? Yeah, but that's basically like just killing their shadow, which isn't isn't that pretty good? I mean, here I think we should just run out hostage taker either way, because I don't want to uh, have our Tefri die. But yeah, if if they had a shadow here, I'd probably take the shadow and just kill it immediately. Because here I feel like there's a chance that they're just gonna get an insane value on us. They're gonna like. Kill our hostage taker, get another shadow, and then have two shadows in hand and blow us out. Here, I think we're going to have to, if we don't draw Niv, we're going to have to, like, Teferi bounce our Lab and draw, and then play the Lab again for another draw. Maybe we just bounce their, their uh, Death Shadow now, since we can't recast the Lab. Okay, we're going to draw both the Ren and Sixes. <laughs> We need a bring to light, a glittering wish, or a, a niv off the top to stay alive. I don't even know. And we're dead. Okay, I'm going to see if we can squeak one win out of this. <laughs> We're going to be switching over to Tron, though. 
I've got the deck downloaded. I'm gonna get that deck primed. Looks like the only card I don't know. Uh, I don't own is a second Weather the Storm, so I can get my hands on that for sure, and then we'll be good to go. This hand's not bad. Looks like we're against Dredge. their dredges haven't gotten any dredgers or their mills haven't gotten any dredgers which is good for us we've got a red source here I think Charles. Pretty smart opting not to uh, not to bring back their amalgams. I think I'm gonna grab the temple garden here. So I can run out the Teferi. One blood gas, one amalgam. I think I'm just gonna draw. I wanna try to get close as we can to getting that uh, brains of light mana. Hunt master, supreme, all seem good here. Chill's putting us awfully close to being dead. <laughs> I said Supreme, so you thought instantly Phantom? No, no. We are not Danny in this game.
Are we dead to a back-to-back -back conflag? Because I think we are. think we're dead no matter what I could run out hunt master they dredge for three I guess we'll get one right and we have to we should grab a white source here in case we want a supreme Oh, nope, they just got the chill. So easy peasy. We're dead. Alright, Kaya. Both Ashiox. I think that's it. Dreadboard doesn't seem great. Teffrey is fine. It can bounce some relevant stuff. Kaya's Guile's great. Maybe the helixes are too slow here. Okay. Let's draw engine going. We get to go Astrolabe into Red and Six into Kaya. It's not bad at all. Green's good, blue is good, so it's either red, white, or swamp. I think I'm gonna grab the white. So that way we can still play the Ren and Six next turn with the breeding pool. Kaya's Guile's great! Alright, so we can go Ren and Six into a Kai's Guile, and that should be pretty strong. Ooh, and they're gonna have to do the Conflag line too? Oh my gosh, this is great. If they have to do the conflag line and pitch their whole hand, I might just do Ashiok so they don't know about the instant speed guy as Kai's Guile. Black source. Boom. Concession. Alright, let's try that again. Try that again.
We got a game. We might be able to get a match out of this, folks. We might be able to get one match out of this. Say it's not even great, but it's not unreasonable. A lot of extra draws here. They kept a seven, though, so that's, like, really good for them. This is looking really rough, folks. Really rough. Basic lands this dredge play. Are they they've got one in play and one in the graveyard. Does the normal list run more than that? Because if that's the case, we could definitely hit them with a Yeah, they're pretty light on basic lands. I'm gonna gamble here. One snow covered forest in play already, and one snow covered mountain in the grave. I'm curious if they're out. Come on. <sighs> they had three. If they are out there, their loans are going to be stuck in their hand, potentially. Alright, I think we're just going to go Teferi, and we're going to bounce that Amalgam back to their hand. They have a can flag in hand. I 
I don't think we'll be alive for an Ashiok off the Niv. We're about to take, we're gonna go to 10. Uh, I guess they could kill Tefri, but I don't think they would. Yep, Tefri's down. Alright, there's the conflag. We need to just rip Ashiok right now. Nope, that's a helix. Can we stay alive? We'd have to use both the trophy and the helix to maybe survive. What lands did they bring back? Stomping Ground, Copper Lion, and Snow-Covered Mountain, which means we can't keep them off the red, the double red. <sighs> All right, so we're just gonna go Vista. We'll pass it over. I think this is gonna be an 05 League. They can cunt flag us for a lot. Oh, we're just dead off these amalgams. They're not even bringing back the amalgams. I feel like that's so BM. <laughs> We're just we're just dead here. All right, we got the O five league. <laughs> oh, I'm not meant to play Niv. I am not meant to play Niv. Uh, I think it's a sweet deck. Um, there were some piloting errors, um, and then the deck just really didn't want to cooperate with me either. But I wouldn't mind playing that. It's not a deck that I could see myself bringing to a big tournament. It's definitely a deck that I'd love to play on league or on a. Uh, on an FNM though. So let's wrap up that video and